Okay, so your kids, your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, your godchildren, the kids in your life, your friends' kids, they have outgrown their changing table and their baby furniture if you've bought it or maybe you have hand-me-down baby furniture, okay? Do not throw it away and don't feel like you can't give it a makeover to grow with them. That is exactly what we're gonna be doing today, but we're gonna put some artistic flair to it. So make sure you guys stay tuned because we are gonna get started. Hey everybody, my name is Kristana. If you are new here, this is my YouTube channel. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. You're only in the first few minutes. Stay tuned, I promise. Keep, keep watching, it's gonna be fun. If you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. I am so grateful for you every single day, truly. Um, if you're not subscribed, make sure you guys are hitting that subscribe button, hit the bell so you get all the latest videos. Tuesdays and Thursdays are the days that I put out videos. I'm really going to try in the middle of this year to kind of figure out something else and maybe I can put out more content, I don't know, we'll see. Eh. Anyways, I got this little changing table. It was one of my really good friend's sons. He has grown out of it. And I wanna show you guys how you don't have to get brand new furniture, you don't have to get rid of it. We're gonna make it to where a kid can really grow into it and it's gonna be so much fun. So, the theme of this is going to be a circus piece. We're going to be doing some texture and fun colors. But I have a decor transfer from Dixie Belle that I'm gonna be using. This is the hot air balloons, hot air balloons and clocks transfer. We're just gonna be using the balloons on it, not the clocks. There's a couple balloons here that really spoke to me. And so these three, sorry, you're shining. It's shining a little bit. You've got the circus one, which we've got some blue, red, a little bit of yellow. This one's white and red right there. This one's got some blue and red. So I think the color theme is going to be, it's gonna be a little bit more of like, we're gonna make it look kind of old world because those balloons are not super vibrant. They are a little bit kind of aged looking. So I think what we're gonna do is do some red. We're gonna do some blue, maybe a little bit of white. Ah! some yellow and kind of just make it all come together. So stay tuned because we are going to prep this piece and hopefully we're gonna make it into a masterpiece. This was furniture for a baby's room and so there's safety tabs on it. I'm going to take a metal putty knife, metal spatula, whatever you wanna call it, and I am going to remove all of these tabs and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my heat gun and apply heat to the area where the adhesive was left behind and I'm going to scrape it off. There's probably still going to be some sticky residue so I'm gonna use Goo Gone and I'm gonna put a little bit on that area, scrub it with a 3M scrubby pad and then wipe it off with a shop towel and that way I don't have any residue left and then this will all come off once I clean the piece and then the surface will be ready for paint. This piece of furniture has been used by quite a few kids. And so over the years, you know, things get lost, knobs get misplaced, <laughs> replaced, whatever. You do what you gotta do to make it work. So I'm gonna replace all the knobs later. I'm going to use Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner to clean the entire piece. I pull all the drawers out, clean the inside and the outside. I am also, once I'm done going over it with my white lightning, I am going to go over it with a clean rag and clean water. This does act as kind of a deglosser, but this is pretty glossy, so I am gonna scuff sand this. I know a lot of people ask me, why don't I scuff sand each piece? I clean every single piece, and I only scuff sand if I'm using a mineral paint or if it has a sheen to it. So you can see right here, I'm gonna wipe off that dust with the microfiber cloth and you can see the difference in the sheen. So 
the the white lightning does a really good job of pieces that aren't super shiny but i just like to prep it the best i can so over to the left is not scuff sand to the right is scuff sand so you could see that it's going to give my paint something to hold on to now this piece is cherry and i'm going to use a few lighter colors so i want to be better safe than sorry and i'm going to go over this entire piece with dixie bell's boss in the white color Boss is a blocking primer and it helps with bleed through and tannins, which I had went over a few weeks ago in my 10 minute Tuesday. I can link it above the card right here. And it's just better for you to prep your piece so that you don't have to go back and fix things when it doesn't work out. So I'm gonna put boss on this entire piece. Once my boss is dry, I am going to put a base coat of burlap. I am using the best dang brush here. And I'm gonna stipple it on here and you'll see why in a second. I'm trying to create a little bit of texture without adding a texture medium. So I want this piece to be textured and kind of worn, but I want to create that with just using the paint instead of an additive. Although I do love sea spray, I wanted to try to do this without it. So you can see the texture that it is creating right here. Nothing too crazy, but at least it's a little bit. So the finish is not gonna be super smooth on here. I'm gonna do this on the entire piece. You can also brush it on and then go back and stipple it to create that texture if you don't wanna do the stippling motion. You have two options. Once my burlap is dried, I'm gonna go in with my blue. So over to the right, I was messing around and I wanted to see what look we wanted to achieve. So that's what we're going for. I am going to use a brush for the burlap, uh, the same brush for all three blues, and then a separate brush for our fluff, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is use our, I'm just gonna call it our blue brush, and I'm gonna dip it in the antebellum blue, and I'm going to stipple it in the area. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be layering the blues on top of each other. We wanna make sure the burlap is dry, but we're not gonna make sure that the blues are dry. So we're doing antebellum blue, I'm gonna stipple it on there, then I'm gonna go in with Bunker Hill blue, the antebellum blue does not have to be dry and I'm going to just randomly put it in areas. What we're doing here is we're adding dimension onto this blue. So we're kind of stippling it, doing a little bit of a circular motion because we're doing kind of a cloudy type blend. And this is going to allow us to have layers and different texture. After we're done with our bunker hell blue, we are gonna go in with our in the navy and I'm kind of concentrate on maybe like the corners and stuff with the in the navy just to add a little bit of a darker shading. But remember, I'm using the same exact brush for all three of my blue colors. So don't worry about it. Now, if you don't want to cross contaminate, you can pour that paint in a paper plate and that won't cross contaminate, but your brush will be cross contaminated. Now I'm going in with my fluff and this is going to add some highlighting. The fluff brush is completely separate than the blue brush. And this is going to add kind of a highlight in areas, but then I'm gonna go back over it with my blue brush before I put any paint on it and I'm going to layer on top of it so that I can minimize the, the white. It's going to highlight it, but I don't want a lot of white. So we're gonna go over the fluff with our blue brush and then if you wanna add some more blue in certain areas, I think right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with some in the navy and just add a little bit more of that darker shading on there. And I am layering in between the in the navy and I'm adding just a little tiny bit of the antebellum blue on there and I'm layering those while it's still wet. Now comes the part where I get to you're gonna say, oh my gosh, you just took the time to do this and now you're destroying it. No, we are gonna create layers. So I'm taking that metal spatula, metal putty knife, metal paint scraper, and I'm going to scrape the paint. I'm not going to allow the paint to dry completely. I'm going to allow it to dry for about five minutes and then I'm going to do this. So that way the paint pulls back a little bit easier and you're gonna see the burlap underneath. I know, trust the process, it's going to look really cool. So I'm going to take this metal scraper and I'm going to hold it parallel to the surface and I'm going to just pull down. I also do it right here where I start at the bottom and I'm gonna pull up. So you wanna make sure that that blade is flat on the surface so you're not getting a bunch of crazy scratches on there. I'm gonna show you how I do this on the drawer. So I'm starting with the antebellum blue, then I'm gonna go in with the bunker hill blue 
and we're going to layer it. And then I'm going to go in within the navy and undo fluff and I'm going to layer it. And then I'm going to go over it and I'm going to take that metal paint scraper and I'm going to pull the paint back. And once we go, after we go over it with the metal paint scraper, Later on, we're going to go over and we're going to sand it with a high grit sandpaper. And this is going to give us an even more layered look. So at this point, you guys really need to trust the process. After everything is dried, I'm going in with a fine surf prep rad pad. So about a 220 to 320 grit. And I'm gonna go over the entire piece with this. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna smooth out everything. And it's just gonna create a more cohesive look and the texture is gonna be more cohesive. And I say texture, but it's actually really smooth. So a lot of people don't, they're feelers and they don't like things to be rough. This finish is not rough. I'm also gonna take a microfiber cloth and I'm going to wipe away all the dust. This area right here is where I'm going to be putting the transfers. So I wanna make sure I get all the excess dust off of this area. And that's why I'm going over it with the mister bottle and I'm going to wipe it away with the microfiber cloth. That way I have a really nice clean surface before I put my bells and whistles transfers on here. And I'm going to show you how I finish off the drawer. So a lot of people ask why I paint with the drawers in and I don't always, but when I'm doing artistic finishes, it just helps me visualize better. And there's really nothing wrong with painting with the drawers in as long as you pull them out and you fix them. I also pull all the drawers out and clean the insides and you'll see that later. But right now I'm going to be applying a transfer. It's Hot Air Balloons and Clocks by, it's the Bells and Whistles line by Dixie Bell. And I am going to dry place it to see where I want it first. I'm going to pull the protective plastic sheet off and I'm going to place it. So make sure wherever you place it, that's where you want it. Now I want you to notice something too. Do you see how there's white with the hot air balloon? In the next frame after I've applied this, you're gonna see that I had painted over that. I didn't like the way the white looked. And so I took an artist brush and I did the same technique over the white that I showed you for actually painting the piece. So that way you're not going crazy. I did do that and I completely forgot to film it, but it's super easy. I already showed you how to do it. So you just take a little artist brush and do it. I am applying the transfer right now. And what you need to do is you need to burnish it really well. I burnish it with my hand first, then I go over it with the stick and then I do it a little bit at a time. These transfers are so good at 90 degree angles and going over curves. I have never used a transfer that doesn't crack when you do that. And this does not crack. 
take your time and do it. But it, the durability of these transfers is, it really is amazing to me. I could not believe it because every other transfer I've ever used, it will crack if you try to apply it on the surface the way I'm doing it right now. So I pull it, I burnish it a little bit at a time and I'm gonna pull it back a little bit at a time. And then I'm going to add the other transfers on here. Now you do need to seal your transfers always. And I will show you how I seal it here in a second. It's really important to burnish your transfers again after you have applied it to the surface. You wanna make sure that you burnish these transfers so well that they become one with the piece, really. That's kind of funny to say that, but no. I use a microfiber cloth and I burnish it really well to the surface. And if you can see right here, I took a razor blade and I pulled all the white. I, I cut around in the plastic and I took the white off of it. When I used it the first time, I did it on a white surface. So obviously, you know, it's white because it's supposed to be in the sky. So don't worry about it. If you're putting it on a darker, darker area, you can paint over the transfer. So let's say that you do do a transfer and you want to kind of make it cohesive. You can paint over transfers as well. If you don't like the white, like I didn't like the white on that one balloon and I painted over it, that is not a problem. The really it's endless what you can do. Remember I told you I take the drawers out and I fix the inside? That's what I just did in the previous one. I pulled all the drawers out and I painted the trim around so that when you close the drawers, it's blue. Now what I'm gonna do is that top border on here, I'm not a huge fan of that look, but I wanted to use this in my design. And so I am going to do all the recessed areas. I'm gonna go over it with fluff so that way it's white. And then all those raised areas, I am going to go over those with rustic red. And that way it looks very circus-like because if you didn't notice the air balloons have a very circus feel, one of them actually says circus. So I really wanna play on that theme for this piece. If you've been following me for a while, I usually each piece that I do, if you haven't noticed, and I don't know if I've really said this or not, they have a theme to them. And so a lot of people ask me how I create these pieces or what I'm thinking. I generally find a theme and I try to work with it in my piece. I wanted to add a little bit more red on this piece. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the paint and we're going to use the paint to accent those areas that are recessed in, the areas on the drawer fronts, on the door front, the edges around those areas. So what I'm gonna do is I mist the area very slightly with some water with my mister bottle. I take a premium chip brush. You can use a cheap chip brush. You don't have to use a nice brush for this part. And I dip it in my paint a little bit and I'm going to go over the areas that I wanna add some red accents. Then I wipe it back with a microfiber cloth first. And then I actually put water on the microfiber cloth. So I spray a little area of the microfiber cloth with my spray bottle and I wipe it back even more. And so that is how I'm going to accent this piece and how you can add more dimension, more color, more layer by just using your paint, a microfiber cloth, and a brush. It's super easy. Because I wanted a worn textured feel on here, I'm gonna take a 80 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna go 
horizontal over that top area. I'm going to try to make sure that I stay horizontal. I don't want that distress to be every which way. I want it to be horizontal. Now I'm going to take the satin clear coat and I am going to seal my entire piece. I want you to notice that I'm going to seal my transfers as well. I like this the best for my transfers. I am using a high quality synthetic brush to seal this entire piece. And you know, you have to seal your transfers in. It doesn't matter what kind of paint you put it over top of. What you're doing is you're sealing the actual transfer itself. And so I am going to seal my transfer with the satin clear coat. That's the best or my favorite that I like to use. And it's super easy. So just put your clear coat on like you would your paint, thin layers, if you want to do a second layer after it dries, you don't need to sand in between coats. Just add another layer on here. I'm going to do something completely different with the top. So <laughs> I just told you I'm going to do something completely different with the top. Do not do what I did. I really wasn't sure what I want to do with the top. So now I have to protect the bottom. So I'm putting a drop cloth around it and I'm taping it off. I am going to put some chemical stripper on it. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. And so that's why I went ahead. Usually I strip the top first, then work on the body. So if you're not experienced and you're not comfortable with it, make sure you do the top first. I just really did not know what I wanted to do. It's not the end of the world if you do it this way. You just make sure you protect the finish that you just did because I, you know, we do not, you don't want to get chemical stripper on this piece that you just worked really hard on. So I'm using my chemical stripper and I'm going to apply a thick layer, allow it to sit for about 15, 20 minutes. And then I'm going to use my plastic scraper that I love and I'm going to scrape it all off. This is a veneer top. And so it's very important that you are careful with veneer. You do not want to blow through it. That is why I use a chemical stripper when I do veneer. I don't generally sand the veneer all the way because it's really easy to blow through it, especially on pieces that may be compromised or you don't know what the finish looks like. So I stripped the entire piece. Now I'm going to take mineral spirit so I can neutralize the piece and so that I can clean all the residue off. I'm going to take a 3M scrubby pad and I'm going to scrub it into the top of the surface. And you can see that there's areas that are pilling up. That is leftover residue. And don't worry, it's going to come off because this, the mineral spirits dries really, really fast. It will evaporate very fast. And so once it's dry, I will go through with a dry, clean 3M scrubby pad and I will just scrub that off and it comes off super, super easy. After that, what I will do is I will sand it. So you can see right here, the 3M pad, everything's dry. It's just kind of pushing right off. Make sure you, you know, sweep it up and dispose of it properly. After this, I am going to go over the top with sandpaper. You need to be careful. So I always start with a 120 grit when I'm working with veneer, especially because I've taken the finish off. There's no need for me to start with an 80 grit when I'm doing this. Start with a 120 grit after you've taken the finish off. Go over it gently. Don't over sand it. And then I go over it with a 220 grit to really finish it off. And then I will stain it. I'm gonna take my dusting brush and I'm gonna dust the top of this off as well as I possibly can before I bring it inside to stain it. I'm gonna be using Voodoo Gel Stain and Tobacco Road, and it is a water-based stain. So I like to mist the surface first of the raw wood before I put my stain on. It helps the stain move a little bit easier and makes it a little bit more uniform. So I'm gonna apply my stain, and right away I am going to take an applicator pad and I'm going to rub it in. And then I am going to make sure that I go with the grain
Once my stain is dry, I take a tack cloth to get all of any fuzzies or anything on there before I add my gator hide. So I take a tack cloth so that I have a really nice clean finish. And so then I'm going to take a high density foam roller and I'm going to apply my gator hide in thin coats going with the grain on this piece. Do not worry if your first layer doesn't completely cover everything. You wanna make sure you're doing thin coats and you don't wanna use a ton of pressure when you're using a high density foam roller. If you use too much pressure, it makes bubbles and that creates a weird texture on your piece. So just let it glide. Don't push it down super crazy. Again, you can see that there are some areas missed. Don't worry about it. Once this fully dries, then I go over it with a super fine rad pad, just ever so slightly to scuff it. I wipe it off with a microfiber cloth. Then I take a tack cloth to get everything off of it as well. And then I do another coat. Okay, everybody, so this video is done. This piece is done. It is now in my son's room. We took it up, my husband left for work, so I had him help me take it up because you guys saw my video on Tuesday. I only have so much space, so I have to get things out of there. You can come here. Tell them, how much do you love your new piece? Is it awesome or what? <laughs> do you guys like it when I do stuff for you? Yeah. Yay. My daughter's over here, come here. Do you guys like when I do videos for you? Or when I when I paint pieces for you? So you guys sometimes see my kids, they're always in the background. Can you tell them, hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> my hit kids are obviously a lot more shy than I am. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button. Okay, everything I use is always in the description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this piece. I know Lane next loves it. Week. And I will see you guys next week. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye. everybody. Bye. Bye. Yours work. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>